Welcome back, folks. We got a great show today. We have a guest with us. What's up, Walt? How you doing? I'm doing good, bro. I'm excited to have Patrice on. She's family. I'm so, so happy to have her on. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I'm so Absolutely. excited to be a guest. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Our first question is, what prompted you for this? What got you into being a, what made you want to be a life coach? So honestly, I was thinking, because I'm used to working a nine to five business. So I honestly, I was thinking of things like an independent way to make my own income. And I wanted it to be something natural. Like I didn't want to start a business and then be like, oh, I hate this business. Absolutely. Or I hate what I'm doing. So I wanted it to be something that just naturally comes to me. So that way I can enjoy what I do. And yep. I looked up the qualities of a life coach and what's suspected of them. And I'm like, I can do this because I've been doing this my whole entire life. Okay. So I'm like, it comes naturally to me. And that's the reason why I chose to be a life coach. Okay. And start the life coach business. Well, see, now, hold on. I got to, I don't have to pull your car. Does, did she show those traits early on, Walt? <laughs> She's always been the times. Of I've been around Patrice, like she's always been encouraging, smiling, lifting other people up. So yes, yeah. she has wow. done those traits. You wow. know, and I think she just found the lane that she wanted to go in and I'm excited for her, man. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> what so so what services do you provide? What do you do usually with your clients? So right now I'm working in a lot of time management, work life balance. I've been doing yep. a lot of career coaching, doing a lot of resumes and helping others like with the interviewing process. People, they really need that. Yeah. A lot of people, they don't, they don't know what to expect. Or sometimes they can be nervous when they're thinking yeah. about switching careers or switching lanes and they just want to be prepared. And I, I like to be the person to help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interviewing is tough. I, I, I tell folks all the time, like, a few different elements especially when you switch in careers like you can have a great resume right you can have great yes. experience right but if you don't nail that interview man you just blow it all away so i i, I see that for you i i see right. i feel like you'll have a clearly you have an opportunity there a lot of folks do, do they just need to like practice right role play right and just exactly you know, somebody and that's encourage them. That's role cool. play. they just need to practice that's cool nice. that's great that's great I know you and Walt maybe prep this one. Walt, you want to take the next one? <laughs> so if I came to you and said I was struggling with work-life balance, what advice would you give to me? So I have three major things that I would tell people with work-life balance. And that's first, you always want to set a routine for yourself. And I'm one of those people, I always believe in planning in advance and always having a plan A and a plan B. So I feel like it, you should plan in advance, definitely plan a week in advance and have a routine set for yourself. Rather that's your morning routine, like waking up, you wake up at 6.30, you make sure that you wake up at 6.30, you make sure that you leave the house by seven. When you get to work, already have mapped out like what you're going to do at your job, for example, when I used to work in retail pharmacy, so I make sure that I get to work by nine. And when I come into work, I know what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to check emails. Then I'm going to do phone calls. Then I'm going to fill prescriptions. Then I'm going to put up my order. So it's all about setting a routine for yourself. And that way you won't be like too blindsided about what's happening. You won't be all just unorganized. So I would say set up a routine definitely for yourself. Stick to the routine. You have to have discipline in it. And then I would also say it's important to set boundaries. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like Love it. In, in every part, in every aspect of your life, you have to set boundaries. And I know sometimes like for us, it can be intimidating, especially at work, mm -hmm. to set boundaries with your boss and yep. set boundaries with your colleagues and to tell them no. But sometimes you just have to tell them no. Sometimes you have to tell your boss, 
no, I can't stay later than what you asked me to do. Sometimes you got to tell your coworkers, no, I already have too much on my plate. I can't help you at the moment with this. I can't drop everything that I'm doing right now to come help you at this moment. So you have to set those boundaries, definitely. I used to be the person that I didn't set boundaries. And then because I didn't set boundaries, I was stuffed with all this work. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't, it was just every, everything was put on me to do and it left me stressed out and I just didn't set boundaries. So setting boundaries is an important thing to do in the work field. And then my number three thing I tell people is to prioritize their mental health. You have to prioritize your mental health. It's very important to do that. I feel like a lot of the times when we go to work, we take our work home with us when really, when we clock out, we should be clocking out. That's right. Clock out from work. When you clock out from work, that's your moment to have a peace of mind. That's your moment to go home and just worry about home things. That's your moment to get time to just relax and refocus on things in your life that you need to focus on that's not work related. Amen. Gotcha. So those yeah. are like my major three things that I like to tell people when I love it. dealing with the work-life balance situation. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I wrote down some of the things that you said here and discipline was one of the key words that you said, having that discipline, making sure that you stick to those plans. But it's not about it's not about being perfect, but it's about practice of practicing and and, and mm-hmm. um implementing that discipline in your life. And then as you slowly practice that you'll you'll develop a habit right exactly and and like and it's to your point i'm really excited for this because i feel like the wellness and life coaching industry is just going to be growing more and more um in the next uh years and months and years and for me i really think that it is there's a focus on not just on the younger generation, but even the older generation too, because some of the, like some of our mothers and our, our our aunts and uncles, they came from a different generation where they, Hey, was like, put your head down, don't say anything and just work. Right. You just, they just, you, work. just work and you burn yourself out. You don't, you don't balance your, your life out because you might be scared to lose the job or whatever. You mm-hmm. might be scared to set that boundary. Like you were saying with your boss, or your coworkers is like, hey, no, I can't. I have this stuff in my life. I did everything I was supposed to do. I even helped out a little bit here. But this is what you have to draw that line in the sand. So I I wrote down all that stuff that you just said. Brian, did you have any notes or questions? Yes, for sure. The mm-hmm. the discipline also made me think about something. One, I love the three points you have. That's great. And the the discipline made me think about the building habit thing. I read something once that as I was reading it, I didn't get it, right? This one guy said he wanted to make a plan to go to the gym, lose weight, blah, blah, blah. But he started with just going. He would walk in, Mm -hmm. get there, and then walk out. Mm. And I was like, the hell? Like, I'm reading through the (laughs) article, right? I'm like, what in the world is this dude doing? And then when he got to the point, it was like, it it was just building that habit. That habit of going of his and then eventually he started working out you know yeah. what i mean and he got his goal so that thought about that and then what you said about prioritize so important because i love the example you gave when it's time to clock out because you most mm-hmm. of us have a whole nother job to do with our yeah. home mm-hmm. and our families right and work is quick to tell you the same thing right when you bring a, a personal some jobs i'll be some of us have great bosses and they understand personal dynamics, blah, blah, blah. God bless mm-hmm. them. But some bosses in some places are like, oh, you got a problem? All right, yeah, leave that at the door when you get to work. Leave that at the door when you get to work. So yeah. I love how you turned it around. And yes, we're going to leave work at the door when we leave. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so as far as the who you service, who can reach out to you? Anybody? Or do, you, or do you have a target audience? I don't have a target audience. Anybody can reach out to me. They got to be ready and want to move on to that next portion of their life. They got to be disciplined 
and have the will. I can encourage somebody all day long, but if you don't want it, then you're not going to be receptive to it. I love it. You heard it, folks. She's going to share her information. You'll be able to reach out to her. Some of you may need, especially those in the payroll industry out there, our HR industry, you may have trouble with your work-life balance. So you Mm -hmm. may have trouble in other areas of your life. That's generous. They definitely have trouble. (laughs) Payroll people definitely have trouble. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Reach out to her. She'll, we'll, we'll have her contact information in the show notes. We'll provide her contact details and reach out, get the service and the help that you need. All right, Brian, you want to ask the next question? Yeah, absolutely. So what do you think is missing from most work environments? Is there something that you're seeing like as a trend that's missing from the workplace? I, I honestly feel, especially in today's workplace, I feel these jobs are missing compassion for the employees yeah no one cares if you stay off and and be sick and literally be in the hospital all night you come to work and they don't take doctor's notes or don't care if you have kids you come in here and you just got to do your job and if you don't come in and do your job you get suspended or you get taunted or you get treated a certain way so I feel these jobs and these corporations are just missing compassion for the employees. They no longer have the compassion. I remember when I was working at my last job, one of the older workers that was there for 20 years, she used to tell me all the time, she used to be like, Patrice, this company used to be such a great company. They treated us good. They actually cared. She was like, as time went on, they just stopped caring. She was like, they don't care about us no more. They don't care to help us. They don't care about the workload. They don't want to pay us what we're worth. So it's missing a lot of compassion in the workplace nowadays. I feel like they definitely need to get back to being more compassionate and more considerate of others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I I remember an owner telling me, I don't care um, about your personal life, Mm -hmm. basically. I just need a butt and a seat to do the job. Right. He said, I can go find another you. I can yep. quit, I can fire you and find another you who can do the job just as good. And I can pay them less. Well, and yeah. that's the sad yeah. truth of it. And that's why we can't, in the same respect, we can't burn ourselves out for jobs, especially ones that don't appreciate us. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gone, they're going to just replace you. So it's, it's like such a delicate balance we got to keep with our work, mm-hmm. this is our livelihood. Is how we pay the bills. But at the same time, they don't give a crap about me. So it's tough, man. It's tough out there. The, and now we're talking about the future of work, which I still don't know what it means, by the way. We don't have to do a, have a need of the tank back on, teach us about yeah. the future of work. Yeah. I, that's yeah. the phrase, that's the buzz phrase, but I don't really know what it means. What else? What else? To What we always like to do is give advice to, to, young or old anybody looking to get into the industry we usually give it to payroll people but and this could be for payroll folk right what advice would you give to someone considering starting a life coaching business gosh there's probably like a payroll life coaching opportunity oh my (laughs) god payroll folk need help let me tell you we out here trying to help folks (laughs) yeah so what what would you tell someone who's interested in getting into this so i would tell Anybody who's interested in becoming a life coach, um, one, that if you don't have a genuine love for helping people and seeing people succeed, then I wouldn't do it. Like, you have to genuinely want to help others and want to see them succeed and want to see people do great in life and move up to their next level in life with any accomplishment that they may have. So first, they have to have a genuine part for it and then you have to be disciplined once again to be in it because nothing happens overnight especially Mm -hmm. when you are trying to be a business owner nothing happens overnight it takes a lot of discipline it takes a lot of networking it takes a lot of speaking and so I will tell them that you just have to be genuine in it you have to be disciplined in it and you just have to you have to let it flow yeah, I love it. Yeah, 
you have to have that consistency, right? People mm-hmm. are going to come to you and you're going to be that consistency, which is why you're the coach. Right. Right? You provide that service. You provide that level of balance that they're looking for. And that's what you have. So folks, listen to her advice. If you're in payroll and you're thinking about getting into yeah. coaching, reach out to Patrice and pick her brain. She may have to charge you like some consulting fees though. Yeah. <laughs> we're we'll always trying to broker some deals on here. Yeah. <laughs> so Patrice, I, I can't let you get away with until I ask you this. I saw you, I heard you speak on, well, I believe it was called She Speaks. Is it uh, she Speaks YouTube? Summit Global. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Can you share with us, I really love what you said about folks having a vision. You remember right. what you were saying? Can you share that with us? Yeah. So for me, I believe that everybody in life has to have a vision. You have to have a vision for yourself. In every part and every aspect of your life, you have to say, I envision myself doing this and I envision myself like doing this in my job or this in my business or I envision doing this in my relationship. You have to have a vision for yourself. If not, then you're just going to live in chaos and you're just going to be gone with the wind. You won't know which way to go. So you have to have this vision for yourself and you have to stick to the vision that you have for yourself in order to get the life that you want, the life that you deserve. Because I believe that everybody deserves a good life. But a lot of people, they just don't have the discipline or they don't have the encouragement or they don't have anybody around them to help push them enough to get to that part of their life that they deserve to be at. Amen. Yes, that's for real. That's 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 awesome. Yes. (laughs) When I heard that, I was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. You something special, girl. Yes, I love it. <laughs> so then just to end it off, how do people find you? Where do we reach out to you? What's the company's name? Yes. So my company name is Visionary Life Coaching, LLC. Love so it. right now I work remotely and you can reach me on Instagram at Coach Tracy. And then I'm also on Facebook at Visionary Life Coaching, LLC. Wonderful. Sure. You heard it here, folks. We really enjoy this conversation and we really wanted, again, to start to bring some wellness conversations to payroll. That's yeah. really the, that's really the right. The gist of it is just payroll folks are folk who are always dealing with deadlines and urgency and stress. stress. Yeah. Um, um, I read a lot. I read a lot about payroll because before I, I got my job at the pharmacy. I was going to school for HR. Oh, wow. Okay. So I, I, I yeah. really love the conversation and I hope payroll folk are listening to this because yeah. it is about payroll and this is about people. It's about getting us right. About people, yes. Yep. Yes. So, so before I let you go, have you ever had to have any tough conversations with any clients? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes if you look at the world that we live in, it's so easy to be distracted. Yes. So I completely understand. It's so easy to be distracted. And it's so easy to have just one thing happen. And this thing, you're just not off track for a couple of months, a couple of years. My job is just to keep everybody focused and keep everybody on one accord. So that way they can get right. to what they want. So, right. yeah. I love it. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> yes. This is a great show. Thank you so much for sharing yeah, thank you. sharing your time with us. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. This is such a great podcast. Thank oh, you. Thank you very thank much. You. It's so it. comfortable. I feel so is comfortable it? talking to you guys. Yeah. It's very See, comfortable. That's cool. Thank you. I think yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Again, folks, Coach Treacy, Coach Tre at Coach Treacy on Instagram yeah. and Visionary, Visionary Life Coaching. Life coaching. Yes, on LC Facebook. on Facebook. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Reach out. Reach out. She's got a good word. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, Walt. Thank you, Patrice. Thank you. Thank you, guys, y'all. so much. Have again. a great night. Thank you for tuning in to It's About Payroll. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and most importantly, keep going.